Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be doing a $50 Minecraft server. Let's get right into it, shall we? But first, a word from today's sponsor. Do you need help with YouTube? Are you ready to take the next step and make your channel bigger? All right, well listen up. I got just a thing for you. It's called TubeBuddy. It's an extension tailored for YouTube and it offers all kinds of tools. One of my favorite is the Tag Suggester, and another one of my favorite is the Best Time to Upload feature. But that's only to name a few, so go check it out for yourself in the link down below. Okay, so unless you've been living under a rock, Minecraft has kind of had a resurgence. People have been downloading shaders, they've been live streaming Minecraft, and it may or it may have to do with the fact that Fortnite's getting kind of boring and people are diving into Minecraft. But regardless, Minecraft has become really popular, and unless you want to pay monthly for a server, you could go with something like this for 50 bucks pretty much anywhere that you can find used systems, or sometimes free if you can find a recycling place to get these systems from and you can host your own Minecraft server. Now, I know there are tutorials out there on how to set up a Minecraft server, and most of the time, you'd probably set that up on, let's say, your gaming PC, but Jackson's gonna tell you exactly why it's a good idea to have a dedicated Minecraft server. So the problem with putting a Minecraft server on your main PC is, well, we've both done it before, and it really bogs down your computer. It takes a ton of bandwidth from your actual line coming into your computer. You never have to worry about it going down or anything as long as you set up everything right and then you can have a basically a dedicated Minecraft server just like if you were to pay to have someone host it from overseas or anywhere in the US. So to talk about the specs of this system, the one we have right here is a Dell Optiplex 390 which has 8 gigs of RAM and an i5-2400. Now you could go with something like 16 gigs of RAM which will leave options down below where you can actually get more RAM. With Minecraft servers, you don't really need that much RAM. Some of the servers hosters which we'll show as an example in this video only give you like four or five gigs of RAM and they run perfectly fine uh, but a quad core processor is probably bare minimum along with eight gigs of RAM and you could always upgrade in the future but for $50 this is like your standard Dell Optiplex you can find them almost anywhere and all you have to do is when we get to the guide install all the assets that you need to run the server and you're pretty much up and running so assuming that you have Windows 10 already installed which we do from there, it's literally just installing software, getting the computer hooked up, and doing some port forwarding. And you actually have to know how to get into your router, but you know, it's not that hard. We'll show you how to do it. All right, guys, so if you're wanting to set up a Minecraft server after you have your system installed with Windows and you have it hooked up, the best way we recommend you set this up, unless you want to have a monitor permanently with the desktop so you can go to it and actually do some work on it, is setting it up first with something like a TV you may have lying around the house and then installing TeamViewer, which allows you to remote into the computer, which is what we're going to be doing right now because our Minecraft server computer is actually in the other room on our benchmarking station. So as you can see right here, we're actually remoted in using TeamViewer and we can start setting up the server. And if we ever need to do some remote work, we can actually work on it from our main gaming computer so we don't have to go in and actually do stuff with it. But setting up a Minecraft server is very simple. If you want a really in-depth guide, if this is your first time doing it, I will leave links down below to a very in-depth Minecraft guide to set up a server. But today we're gonna go over the basics of what you need to do. And then from there on, you should be pretty set for setting up a Minecraft server. So all you really need to do is download the Minecraft server.jar, which is a jar file that you download from Minecraft's website. And then as long as you have Minecraft already installed on the server, which you probably won't, you will wanna download the Java for Windows version that'll actually allow you to run the server. So pending whether or not this server already has Minecraft installed, which Java will be installed with that, you may or may not have to download that, but just to be safe, you probably should go ahead and download it anyways. Now, once once you have all the files you needed downloaded, the Minecraft server file, and make sure you're running a Java 64-bit version. That was an issue I came across when setting up this server. Once you get that installed, what you're going to do is create a new folder on your desktop and call it Minecraft server. You're going to put that jar file that you got from Minecraft's website into the folder, and then you're gonna be creating a new text document. Now, it doesn't matter what you name this text document because you're gonna be deleting it in a minute, but what you're gonna do is go inside it and you're going to copy and paste 
what I have in the description. Now, what I have right here is a command that will have your server allocate four gigs of RAM, which is normally what people would recommend for a Minecraft server nowadays. You really don't need that much more than that unless you're hosting a massive server, which when you're hosting a server like this locally, it's mainly for your friends. So four gigs of RAM, what you're gonna do is copy this command. I also will leave other commands down below for different amounts of RAM, one gig all the way up to four gig, depending on what kind of server you're running or how old the system is. But we do recommend running four gigs. It is kind of overkill, but you know, with a Minecraft server, it's always good to have that extra headroom. So what you're gonna do is copy it into this text document and you're gonna hit file, save as, and you're gonna call this run.bat. And then under the file type, you're gonna click all files and hit save. Then what you're gonna do is exit out of this text document, hit the run.bat file, click enter, and what's gonna happen is it's going to load up a bunch of files in this folder. Now it does say right here, it failed to load properties from server properties because we haven't agreed to the EULA. So what you're gonna do is close out of this, go to the EULA and under the EULA where it says false, change it to true. Basically you're agreeing to the terms of service of Minecraft servers and hit save, close that out. And what you're gonna do is hit run again. And once you hit enter, Everything else just start loading in because you did agree to the Minecraft server, EULA. So waiting on that to run in, there it goes. It's building the server, so it might take a little bit. It's gonna pop up some of this stuff to allow access to use Java. It's loading in all the files and it can take a little while for all this stuff to load in. So do give it a moment to actually do what it needs to do. Um, and then once it's done, then you have yourself a Minecraft server and all you have to do is go into the server properties, which we'll do here in a moment, add your local IP address, and then it's up to port forwarding for you to actually get the server to run out of your local network. So let's say Jackson over here wanted to join my server. He could join my server now if he wanted to just by using a local IP. But if you do want someone from, let's say, your friend down the street or across the world to actually be able to join your server, you do need to do some port forwarding, which we will leave guides down below because that ends up being a more time consuming thing and it's very dependent on what your router is. So for this example, we are just going to be showing you how to get the server up and running and then you can decide whether or not you wanna make this a port forwarded server for anyone to join or just keep it local. So as you can tell here, it prepared our spawn areas. Now if you want to end this server, all you have to do is type stop and then the server will stop and eventually close out after it's done saving all of the files that are within the server. So press any key to continue and boom, your server is closed. So as I mentioned, what you're going to do is go to your server properties document, go down here and where it says your IP address, server IP, what you're going to do is copy and paste your IPv4 address, which you can get from CMD into the server IP section and then hit save, close out of that, close out of that. And then all you gotta do is hit run. As you can tell, it is re-preparing the spawn area, loading up the map. It might take a little bit again to get the spawn area up and running, but once it says done, your Minecraft server is good to go. Now, as I mentioned, if you wanted to join locally, you could just join locally off your LAN. So if you go into a Minecraft server, in theory, it should still be there so you could actually see the server locally on your network. But the whole point of this really, again, as long as you pour it forwarded, is allow other people to join your server. So all you have to do, which we're not gonna show our IP address because we don't want to disclose where we are. Go to what is my IP, just Google it, what is my IP? And that's gonna be your public IP address that you type into Minecraft to join the server. So what I'm gonna do real quick is get out of this, open up Minecraft on whatever system you're going to play Minecraft on, go to multiplayer and add a server, which we'll just call it a Minecraft server and put in that IP address, which you will not see right here because that is our IP address. You're gonna hit done and then it should show up if it's working as a working server right here. So we can go on here. Jackson's actually on the server right now. And I am in this with him. I don't know where he is, but he's running around. He's just he's a parkour god right now. But it is a working server. You can run around, break some blocks. Jackson said hi. He's on the server with me. Hit tab. You can see who's on the server. Um, and overall, it just works. It's a Minecraft server. has four gigs of allocated RAM, which would be more than enough for two people to play or even multiple people to play. Um, and I see Jackson over there now. There he is. I'm going to come to him. And you can do some mods, you can install stuff like buckets. There's a lot of tutorials on how to do that, but just getting a vanilla Minecraft server up and running, oh, this man wants to fight, this man wants to fight, is uh, relatively simple. And now that we have it up and running, we can uh, do an outro real quick. 
So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. We would actually like to see if any of you guys duplicate this project. And also, we want to reiterate, this is a concept that you probably want to do mainly with your friends. Again, if you do not protect your IP, people can know where you live, they can do stuff to your internet. So if you're somebody who's doing this for the first time, don't host the server and then just throw your IP out in the wild for people to join. Definitely do some research on how you can protect yourself if you plan on doing this. Or if you do want to have a more protected server that's off-site, there are hosting options, but this is the cheap option that allow you to get up and running and playing Minecraft with your friends. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you guys in the next one.